I don't know. Like, I don't know if you guys grew up around horses. I grew up around horses, but horses aside, let's talk about, let's do a nuclear stun lock real quick. Guys, ready? Here we go. Nuclear, it's too late for nuclear, okay? That's the problem. The real problem is not that nuclear isn't interesting. The real problem is not that nuclear isn't uh, isn't potentially fascinating. It's too fucking late for nuclear, okay? Uh, so here's the problem. Nuclear is a very, very expensive investment. It takes a lot of money to invest in nuclear. It takes a lot of money to upkeep nuclear. Nuclear has to be heavily watched over and regulated. And I don't know if you guys noticed this, but we have we 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 have a hard time with regulation even at the best of times. We have a hard time uh with infrastructure investment even at the best of times. Nuclear could have been a thing and it could have helped us avert um the ex insane endless disgusting usage of 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 oil and reliance on oil and coal especially oil and coal are the two ones that are the biggest of the biggest concern but the problem that we have now is that um nuclear first of all it takes forever to get it up and running it takes forever to get nuclear facilities built to spec but then you also need to be sure that you actually have a team that can maintain nuclear um uh, nuclear uh reactors and not have them melt down. And if infrastructure is breaking down because of climate change, which it is all over the place, that means every nuclear facility is yet is even at even more risk than it used to be. Now, keep in mind that the risks of nuclear have been largely overstated. While um, there is a lot of truth to the idea that like uh, nuclear meltdowns have historically been very, very bad, they're actually quite rare and um, Compared to the the damage that's done by coal and the damage that's done by oil. It's nothing by comparison but it's not actually nothing because That risk goes up when they can't be maintained properly that risk goes up when there isn't pre-existing um, when there isn't pre-existing infrastructure to help protect from the risk of nuclear fallout to help resist uh, the the or to help uh, prevent nuclear meltdowns from happening as situation as as infrastructure breaks down as regulation breaks down it becomes harder and harder to ensure that nuclear power plants are going to be running safely and effectively and when they do go bad they go really really bad Everybody, the biggest concern with nuclear that everyone always brings up is the fact that you create forever poison. That the the products of uh, the the byproducts of nuclear power are uh, deathly radioactive waste that will never break down. It will be there until the end of the planet. Okay, it's just a scientific fact that you can't get rid of nuclear waste. Now it produces a small amount, but a small amount is enough to potentially poison a large area. And that means that if things do fuck up, you have a place that is permanently ruined. So it's not just, it's not just a matter of the idea that like, I, I don't think that nuclear is bad. I think nuclear would have been an incredibly better option. Oh, this is the other thing I meant to say. Sorry, this is the most important part. Ready? The most important part is that nuclear doesn't address the fundamental problem. Okay? And I know that nobody wants to hear this. Nobody ever wants to hear this. People always get mad whenever I bring this shit up. Uh, I can't believe I almost I almost switched top. Well, I didn't, I guess, but whatever. Uh... People hate it when I say this, but it doesn't address the core problem. Our problem is not that we uh, that we use an inefficient fuel source. Our problem is that the way that we live is trash. Our societies are bad. That is the problem with the way that we live. 
It is not that we're not using an efficient source. Nuclear would only kick the can down the road. Nuclear cannot is not an infinite energy source. It's certainly better than oil, obviously, but it's never going to be able to solve the problem of a society that is fixated on perpetual growth, on a society that is fixated on never-ending consumption. That's the problem. The problem is not just oil. The problem is not just coal. The problem is that we live, we have traded away life. We have traded away any, any semblance of, 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 of existence on a planet in the name of Funko Pops and, and cars and iPhones. And that's not to say iPhone is bad. iPhone is really cool. Technology is really, really cool. But we live a lifestyle that is insanely wasteful. We, we live lifestyles that are, I mean, disgustingly wasteful. And you don't even have a choice in it. Like, did you make the decision to package uh, soda cans in, in plastic, uh, in those little plastic things that kill sea turtles? No, you didn't. You were told you're... You are given the product options and you choose the product that you that you need for your life for whatever reason and the options are in front of you. There are there are and and and, and obviously being a human means there's always some waste products but that's not how we live. We throw everything away. We don't recycle anything. We don't give a shit. We uh we 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 if we want something, even if it's the worst thing for the environment, we always go for it. We never, ever say no to anything. Maybe don't buy products that are so heavily packaged. What? It, what's that supposed to do? So one person doesn't buy one person doesn't buy heavy packaging. Congratulations, you've reduced it by six cans. The problem is, is that every single supermarket in America stocks nine hundred thousand cans of soda wrapped in plastic. The, the, the problem is, is that every single get, uh, uh, grocery store in America, uh, uh, you know, is, is dependent on plastic bags. There's no, our culture doesn't care about waste. Our culture doesn't care about need. Our culture doesn't have any sort of grasp on what it means to be happy. We have no philosophy outside of consume. We have no philosophy outside of buying. Real quick, just, just let's do a test. I want you to just close your eyes right now, and I want you to think about how good it would feel to just go buy something right now. Doesn't matter what it is, just anything. Bet it would feel good, right? Bet it would feel great. You've been trained from the day you were born to get a rush from buying anything. And, it, and if you've ever done any deep introspection about this, if you've ever thought about it, like how many times have you just been bored, so bored that you just wish you could go to the store just to look at things and maybe consider buying them? That's because for many, many people in their life, buying something new is like one of the few like joyous experiences that is always there. If you have the money, you can almost always find something to make you a little bit happier. But that's no way to live. That's not a way to live your life. That is not a satisfying way to live. And it obviously privileges those who have infinite money. And everybody else starts to live in this life of terror. Where the only, uh, where the only relief they can ever get is that they occasionally get to go buy something nice for themselves. Malls are dens of this culture. The consumerist culture uh, has been talked about for a long time. And obviously nowadays, all of us live at the tail end of like the, the peak of consumerist culture through the 80s and 90s, where uh, literally it was a, a, a foundational portion of culture to just go spend time buying shit at the mall with your friends. Buying, yeah, exactly. Buying something gives you a sense of control. One of the only senses of control that our society gives you. But keep in mind, that's not the only way to live. It isn't the only way to live, but increasingly, it's the only way that anybody has access to live. We know that there are different ways of living. We know that there are ways of, uh, that there are ways of engaging with the world that are more about, uh, that are more about 
the experiences you have with others that put forward social or even solitary pursuits that aren't nearly as wasteful. But those are increasingly stamped out in favor of buying things. In favor of always having new products. I get joy coming to live streams like this one. That's why my show is free. Even though I appreciate donations from all of you, of course. We all live in this system. We all have to buy shit all the time. It's just how it is. But that's why my show is free. My show is free because I want people to have ways to entertain themselves and ways to have fun and ways to get their brain juices flowing that don't involve going out to the store and buying something. Capo says, there's a scene in THX 1138 where someone goes to the store to buy something just to immediately throw it out. It's literally a nondescript cube. The whole point is the pleasure of buying it. <laughs> have, you, have any of you walked through a Walmart? I've done this rant on stream many times, so I know some of you are going to groan the absolute moment um, that I bring this up, but... Next time you go to a Walmart toy aisle, okay? Next time you go to a Walmart toy aisle, walk through the Walmart toy aisle and go and see how many of them are blind box garbage toys. Literally meant to be thrown out. You buy them, you get the <gasps> of opening a little package and then you throw it away. They are literally landfill trash. And it's endless. That is every store in America across every city in America, the biggest stores in the country, the stores that are in every single city, every single big or small town in America are stocked with an, a never ending stream of wasteful petroleum products that are meant to be thrown away. Yeah, look at loot box. Loot box is another one. Those fucking loot box uh, subscription things. You order it, you get a bunch of trash that's meant to be thrown away, that makes you feel a little bit of excitement because you got a package in the mail. Fab Jenny says, honestly, I'm happy that plushies seem to still be surviving. It's funny. I've actually, I, I, I've, done, I've done a rant about plushies as well, about how the culture, the, the toy culture in, in, uh, in secondhand shops has changed for, over the course of my life. Um, when, when I was younger, if you went to a, 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 you know, like a Goodwill or a, a vintage, or, you know, not a vintage, a, a secondhand shop, uh, there would be all kinds of just weird stuffed animals in there. Just uh, random animals, all kinds of stuff. Now, when you go to a Goodwill, and I dare you, go to a Goodwill, go see what the toy section looks like. It's a bunch of, um, it's a bunch of Disney Tsum Tsums. It's a bunch of, um, Baby Yodas. It's a bunch of, uh, stuffed Lilo and Stitches. It's a bunch of, uh, it's all a pre-existing product. Like the plushy market is so destroyed. It's it's terrible. They're all licensed products for a, for for like a uh from like Disney mostly. Yeah, literally the Wally -E trash fields of toys. Yeah, hatchimals, all kinds of things. It's ridiculous. Back when Amazon was doing those dash buttons, the $5 buttons you could use to reorder frequent stuff before they discontinued it for Alexa, there was one that would send you a loot box, but it was a loot box of candies, all locally sourced. That's the only good type of loot box. Surprise food. I think there are loot boxes you can do that are more fun. I mean, isn't, isn't like an Easter egg hunt like the original loot box? We know it's fun. It's just the way that we do it is the worst, laziest, most exploitative way imaginable. This is a good take on consumerism, but a bad take on nuclear. It's not a bad take on nuclear. Do you really... Wait, Pan S. Main, do you really trust the current U.S. government with maintaining nuclear power plants in the modern age? Like, we haven't even managed to assess the infrastructural damage that has been sustained by this country since COVID, let alone if we had a whole bunch of nuclear plants all over the place. Don't buy into magical thinking. Don't buy into it. 
It's not that it's not that nuclear as a technology is bad. It's not that like there aren't potential, but it requires an incredible amount of responsibility, a responsibility that I don't believe that most of our societies can muster, nor can they upkeep. We have to think about ways. The hard way of saying it is degrowth is going to happen, everybody. It's going to happen. It is a fact of of your future. If you are going if unless you are like 80 years old, or planning on, uh, or, or, or like aren't gonna make it for the next few years, which I'm sorry if that's the case, that's really difficult to deal with. If you're gonna be living on this planet for any, any significant time of the future, you are going to witness a period of degrowth. And what you are also going to witness is that it's going to be very slanted. Rich people are going to not degrow, they are going to make poor people degrow. You are not gonna have a car anymore. Your friends are not gonna have a car anymore. You're not gonna be able to afford gaming shit anymore. You're not going to be able to afford a phone anymore, whatever. It's going to be poor people who are cut out of the equation, and the rich people are going to hold on to their luxuries. We have to figure out how to live good lives, even if we're denied nice things. Even if we're denied the fruits of the collective labor of humanity. Even if we've made technical wonders that are and should be available and more responsibly used. The sooner that people embrace that fact, the sooner that people recognize that we need to figure out um, sustainable ways of living, more sustainable ways of living, that we are at a, oh, oh, and of course, don't even get me started at the current state of affairs. Post COVID, everybody ordering things all the time, the devastation of, of the complete and utter devastation of like any sense of like local sourcing of anything ever, that everything is done through Amazon now, this is, this is, it is a disaster waiting to happen. It is a enormous disaster. And of course, it's a disaster that's mostly gonna affect poor people because it always does. Every society that is currently dealing with this right now, it dumps onto the poor people. It's like they don't want you to go to the stores anymore. They don't. Companies like Amazon, it is cheaper for them to have centralized, it is cheaper for them to have centralized warehouses that they ship low paid delivery people to drive to your door, that's efficient for them. It's terrible for you because if, if Amazon and all of these companies had their way, there would be no local distribution. And if there was a disaster in your area, if there was a storm, you would not have a grocery store in your area to go get food. You would have to wait until they restored delivery service. But what does that mean for you? For them, it means profit. For you, it means if a storm hits your area, you die. They don't give a shit. They don't give a fucking shit. If you're, if in their world, if you're smart, you'll get a job with Amazon. That way you can be sure that you'll have snacks available in the break room when the power goes out in your area. People like Mark Zuckerberg want you to believe that you can live in a pod that you can plug into a VR and play video games and that's the only thing that matters. But let me tell you, video games are meaningless if you don't have an actual life to enjoy in between. They are meaningless. Video games are, I love video games. I fucking love the computer. I stream on the computer. I love watching stuff on the internet. But it is there. It is so obvious that like the 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 uh, logic of of modern capitalism wants you to believe that you can just basically suspend your. So they want you to get to the point where you can live in the matrix, where you can sit in a pod and you'll just see illusions uh, projected before you. Interestingly, there's a scene about this in Aniara. The movie Aniara tackles this directly. The movie I was talking about that you all should see, it's a highly, highly critical film of consumerism. But anyway, too much Doomer fuel? Maybe this is a little bit of Doomer fuel, but maybe, I don't know. We're about to talk about the, uh, we're about to talk about the uh, Van Gogh tomato sauce. So, you know, maybe it's good to have a little bit of Doomer fuel.